when you think about it, 20 years later, Gretchen did actually make Fetch happen. This is Mean Girls, the musical. It's on Paramount Plus and has audio description. I actually reviewed the original Mean Girls last year as part of my 40 for 40 when I was celebrating turning 40 and sharing you some of my favorite films of all time. And uh, so I've seen the first Mean Girls really just an unhealthy amount of times. I'm actually quite familiar with the musical. I actually, for my real life job, work with musical theater kids. And uh, yep, this musical comes up quite a bit in, in repertoire. They love to belt uh, till someone gets hurt, world burn, stuff like that. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard the songs. It's a revenge party, a party that ends with somebody's head on a spike. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I can sing the lyrics. I am that big of a nerd uh, with this musical, but I've never, I didn't travel to Broadway to see it. So, um, uh, so how am I going to feel about it? Because I'm a huge fan of the original movie. I like the musical. I think it's clever. And now we have the movie adaptation of the musical, which stars Angry Rice playing Katie Heron, which was previously played by Lindsay Lohan, Renee Rapp playing Regina George, which was previously played by Rachel McAdams. We have Jaquel, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, playing um, Damien, who uh, was previously played by, yeah, I totally forgot his name. Um, I know, he's he did have a career, he was in Looking, I, I'm so sorry. Um, and uh, he has a much elevated part here. They've done a lot with Damien um, in terms of the musical by attaching him to Janice, who's played by uh, Ali Corvallo, Corvallo here. I will get her name right <laughs> at some point, who was originally played by Lizzie Kaplan. And um, the two of them together are sort of like the de facto narrators of the story. They have a lot more to do. They're, they're in some regards, if you were auditioning for the show, you might consider them the leads. It's really nebulous. This musical actually kind of spreads it out a little bit more um, to where lead is hard. I actually don't know who gets final bow. Um, it, I don't know that it should be Katie. Uh, I just, I, maybe Janice gets filed now. I, I don't know. Um, it's an interesting thought. And then there are the other two plastics, um, who are played by, uh, some girls. I, I have to say, I don't know where they came from, but I, I think they're both fine. Um, one of them may end up going on to have a career like Amanda Seyfried, where she gets nominated for an Academy Award, and the other one may go on to have a career where she's, you know, she's, she's doing Hallmark movies. So, just wildly different, <laughs> wildly different career reactions for those two. Also back for the ride are Tina Fey and Tim Meadows. And, spoiler alert, Lindsay Lohan actually appears for like a hot second in this. It's like a hot sec. Don't don't get too don't get too excited, but for those of you uh, who aren't sighted, you won't even. It's a blink and you'll miss it, uh, type of thing. So, um, you have to look it up in advance. And as I'm a blind film critic, I'm mentioning it because I know my audience is. So I just want to mention, look it up first, so that, that way you don't miss it if you're going to watch this movie. <laughs> so that way you know where she is and when you're supposed to find her. Um, her voice has changed a lot. If you if you aren't familiar with the couple of things she's done recently, anyway. Um, so what's up with this movie? What's up with this musical? Um, it's uh, I've heard a lot of different takes on Mean Girls, the musical, the twenty twenty four version, <laughs> and the fact that it is Mean Girls for this generation. Uh, to that, I would say, do kids today still say shut up? You know, um, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to try to take pieces of what once worked and make sure that you get those direct line readings, those direct quotes, those moments in there, 
Um, they're trying to hit the beats for the fans. They're trying to hit the beats for the fans who are my age, who are 40 year olds, but they're also trying to do it in a way that attracts the generation of today. And I don't know that the generation of today speaks the same way that they did 20 years ago. And a lot of the lines require them to say things the way they would have 20 years ago. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, like the get in loser, we're going to go, <laughs> we're going shopping. I, it just, I don't know. Is this, is it a thing? Because I feel like, um, the thing about uh, teenage slang is that it, it, it evolves so quickly and so rapidly that that words and phrases uh, have a half-life that is so short. When you think about like keeping it 100 and like on fleek and, and stuff like that, those, those are newer phrases than Mean Girls, but they're already dead, you know? So like there are many things that don't, that nobody says anymore. Um, so I, I don't know that you can keep it the exact same way. Uh, and some of the lines aren't kept the same way. There's the line that Damien has about Karen and Orange, and um, he doesn't give any backstory to it. He just says, once I saw her try to put a D in the word orange, and instead of like saying, I sat next to her um, in class and she asked me how to spell orange, and um, I guess we're not fit making fun of kids who can't spell, but we still are because you're still saying she puts the D in orange. You're just finding a different way of doing it. So some of the line changes don't really make that much sense, but then other line changes are like, why didn't you change that? Um, there's, there are some really bizarre things they keep and the, but they keep them in the wrong places that it's just i <laughs> i don't know i don't understand this film i did not not like it i think there's some talent here i really do um and i'll get to that but uh there's the scene where um katie actually gets to sip the plastics for the first time so when she does that regina just calls her over she summons her like you know, like the Queen Bee, right? Like she probably should have the whole time because this is adapted from the novel Queen Bees and Wannabes. So she's kind of just like, she's a queen and she sees a, a, a subject of hers and she's just like, you, come here. Why don't I know you? Um, in the original movie, it's because Jason comes up to her and does the um, uh, I'm, I'm a senior, I'm doing a poll, uh, can, uh, is your muffin buttered? Would you like your muffin buttered? <laughs> they, they, they drop that. So, um, so that never happens. And, uh, because he can't come up to her as much because she's with Damien and, uh, Janice at the time. So instead, she, instead Regina just calls her over and just summons her to the table. And then Jason comes up. <laughs> and then Jason, while Katie is with Regina and the other plastics, says some dumb shit about how he can guess a girl's bra size if they jump up and down once. And I'm like, how is that a better line than, than the buttering the muffin? I... I get it. We're in like a place we've had like Me Too and we we're in a place now with teen comedies where girls now take the lead and and boys can't be creepy and gross anymore. It's his he's a creepy boy and his vines are gross. That's just who Jason is. That is exactly what his lines are. It's exactly who he's supposed to be. So they've given him a creepy gross line. But it's, now it's even weirder because he walks up to the plastics and says that line, which prompts Regina to say the whole thing about Gretchen and you can't scheme on a girl right in front of me about Gretchen. And it's like, Gretchen's right there at the table. <laughs> anyway, it is just a bizarre choice. Some of the choices are just weird. Um, mean Girls is very well known for having Mean Girls Day. It's the day that Aaron Samuels <laughs> turned around and said hi to Katie. So they do that. 
but they don't tell you what day it is because there's no internal narration here. Uh, this version of Katie does not talk to herself. <laughs> there's no, so when she does it, we don't know what day it is. So later on down the line, they say something about on October, they say something about October 3rd and they try to make a big deal about it then, but it's, it feels forced. It feels like they had to keep it because of Mean Girls Day, because everybody knows October 3rd is Mean Girls Day. It's the, if you're a fan of the film, you know exactly what it is. It's like, on Wednesdays we were pink, you know? Um, I mean, there are just certain things that are expected that come along with this film that, that are tied. And choices, right? It's just, it's all about choices. Um, I'm not hating on this thing. I think it should be its own uh, device, but it's, it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know where to go or what to do. It didn't think hard enough about <laughs> what it needed to keep and what it didn't need to keep and, and how to keep things and move things around, uh, or why something worked. That's the biggest question is it didn't actually ask why something was the way it was the first time around. And this time around, Tina Fey and Tim Meadows seem really bored. They do. Like, they're not nearly invested in these characters anymore. They're, I know they're a little bit older, a little bit wiser, but they also kind of seem like they they realize they signed up for something that's not as special as the original. And that's that's a shame, because I think there's some really good performances here. Not in Gory Rice, but everyone else is fine. <laughs> uh, Renee Rapp is really good as Regina George, actually probably the closest to actually rivaling... Um, I mean, that's a best case scenario. Renee Rapp as Regina George is the best case scenario you could possibly get for a uh, Rachel McAdams clone. I have no idea what she looks like because she's obviously new and I'm blind and I, I don't know. But I do know what Ra Rachel McAdams looks like and I can, I understand what she's trying to do with her Regina. And Renee, for the most part, makes all of it work. Um... Every once in a while, they're given a line reading, and they read it differently. And it's not that you can read a line differently, but you have to understand why your line is there. And I don't think the director of the film... I would put a lot of the blame on the director. I know we don't do that. I know that's very, like, passe nowadays. But just, just, just... It's all the studio interference. It's all that stuff. But... Um, to some extent, it is a director, and it's a director's feedback. And if the line isn't working, then it's, it's not working. And you have to, as a director, you have to say, that line doesn't work. Do it again. The line doesn't work. Do it again. It's, if you have to explain it to your cast member as to why that line needs to be a certain way, then you have to explain it. If you have to rewrite it, then rewrite it. But the line has to work. You can't just put in these dead line readings, which just sound like somebody's been handed a line, and they're like... Uh, like Damien with the orange line. It doesn't work. And they left it in there. He says it like he has, like he's literally being held at gunpoint to say that line. But it, it, it doesn't fit his vibe at all as a character. It doesn't fit his version of Damien at all. Um, it's just, some of it is weird. And it's not bad, but it's weird. Um, and that does prevent, prevent it from being great. Uh, the weirdness, the clunkiness to it, it just prevents it from being great. Also, the fact that this was originally being planned as a Paramount Plus movie, not a theatrical release, which is why you get so many scenes that are shot on uh, cell phones, which I can't look good on a big screen, by the way. Uh, so good luck, good for all of us who stayed and waited until this thing came home to streaming, because... This is actually where it was supposed to be seen. They didn't actually want that originally when they were shooting it to be seen on the big screen. Uh, they moved it because they realized how popular the franchise was and they needed something for January. Uh, obviously, with the strike and everything, they made the right decision. This movie made a decent amount of money at the box office. So, much like Smile, it just got moved. Um, so, yeah, they they... They didn't even really think about crafting this for theatrical windows. So it just kind of feels to me a little bit like 13, which Netflix did, which didn't go theatrical. And uh, just it, this is a little bit more high profile because uh, it's Mean Girls and people know what Mean Girls is. Trying to tell people what 13 is is a much greater challenge. Um, but 
it did cut songs and I always I don't like that and I feel like there was at least one song that I've never heard before that I think was written for this musical and I hate when they do that I hate when they write a song for a musical but then they take songs out that bothers the shit out of me because what they're all doing and I said this in my color purple review recently because it was the last movie musical you guys are all chasing listen that's all you're doing I know exactly what you're doing you're trying to get listen you're trying to get a song that is so that's so good and so strong and so memorable, so instantly, so big of an earworm that they actually rewrite the show to include the song you wrote for the movie, which is exactly what happened with Listen. If you now get the rights, the touring rights to Listen, uh, to the tour rights to Dreamgirls, if you're staging it at, at a community theater level, it includes Listen. Listen is written into the show. Um, it wasn't originally in the musical, but uh, they did find the moment for it in the show. So, but these new songs that are being written, they're all just kind of not working. They didn't, you know, suddenly doesn't work in Les Mis. Uh, Nevermore was pointless because it's just, if I can't love her. Um, the same thing with Little Mermaid. Eric's song is okay, but it's it's literally, he has a song. It's her voice that Disney even did in The Little Mermaid Live. Um, it's, uh, they're just writing songs to, to write songs. Jurgen Hansen has songs that, and then it cuts songs. It, it just doesn't need to have them. So here they cut one of my favorite songs, which is Where Do You Belong, which is Damien's big song. Um, it's a big sort of show-stopping musical number and they cut it and I, I don't know why. And then they, what's really funny is it segues into Meet the Plastics. And then you can see, like, it's so weird to hear them speaking the lines that they should be singing. You know, they call themselves the Plastics. They're shiny, fake, and hard. And they call themselves the Plastics. They're shiny, fake, and hard. Like, it's just, why are we, why are we speaking the lyrics? <laughs> why, why did you bother to include them at all? Why not rewrite it? It's so weird. This film is weird. It's bizarre. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm all over the place on this. I think for the most part, the cast is fine. Um, I think I I really enjoyed Renee Rapp the most. But I actually think both of the girls that played the plastics were fine. Um, the girl that plays Karen, who has like one name because she's like Madonna or something. I don't know, but... It's just like, you haven't done anything, you have one name. Who are you? <laughs> are you a TikToker? Like, where did you come from? <laughs> um, I've heard, and I haven't even bothered to remember her name. Uh, but her, uh, Sexy is very good. Her, I know that that sounds really creepy and weird, but the name of the song is Sexy. The one that she does, um, for Halloween, the, uh, if you think you're sexy, it's a full-time gig, thinking that it's that that thing it's called that's the name of her song um and then gretchen uh i thought she was good her what's wrong with me was strong so um i don't know why she's no longer the the daughter of the man that created toaster strudel i don't know why we cut that from the musical uh it's a choice but that's a choice see i'm not being nitpicky here that's i don't i didn't need that it's fine. I mean, there are some references to it in the original movie, which is cool. Um, but it's just sort of like Katie is now from a single parent family. Uh, Jenna Fisher is obviously alone in the world and has no husband. Okay. I, I, it's a choice. I don't necessarily, I don't think it affected the story. So if you want to make a choice so that you can make the thing different, then I guess that's a choice to make. They leave out the whole Car Coach Carl thing, which is um, fine. The whole uh, Trent Park and, and where he's sleeping with like two of the Asian girls. That whole thing isn't in this movie at all. What's weird are the choices that, they, that the musical kept and then the movie adaptation of the musical didn't keep. Those are the choices where I'm like, why are we trying? <laughs> like, what are you trying to? Why? Why? Um, so the movie musical does actually keep the fact that Regina and Shane are hooking up in the mascot. 
um, which they do in the original movie. But here they're hooking up like in a closet, like in a in shop or something, something like that. It's some weird uh, thing that Gretchen has to say instead that uh, it doesn't it it's it has such little impact because it's not funny anymore. It's just like why? <laughs> I just I have so many questions and all of them are just why. Like, do I think that you have to do the exact same thing? No, I, I don't. Like, for example, I don't care that they made Janice a lesbian. Um, they actually, in the first, uh, in the original movie, uh, she's not. That's the, her, her whole story is that Regina makes up a rumor about her. Um, and that, uh, you know, she's offended by it. Well, it's, that's kind of, you know, I mean, they're not going to write a character who's offended by being called a lesbian in 2024. So that's a, that's a solid change. So instead of her being offended by it, they embrace the storyline. They have this whole past now with Janice where she came out and she had like a unicorn. She put like a rainbow on it. And then like Regina did in solidarity. And this, this is like whole thing. So, um... It, so basically, Janice is actually a lesbian in this film, which is fine. I understand why they did that. The choice makes sense for this adaptation. And there are certain choices like that that make sense for this adaptation. <laughs> that, like, okay, good choice. I don't need a coach that's sleeping with his students. I don't need that to be a part of the storyline. It was, it was fun back in the day, but I can understand why 20 years later it's problematic and we need to change the storyline. Um, some of the things are moved through a lot quicker and I didn't miss them. There's the whole thing, um, that gets rolled into Apex Predator where, uh, when the girls go to the mall and Regina sees Jason, um, with the, uh, like flirting with the other girl, that just gets rolled into Apex Predator instead of it getting its whole moment where she calls, uh, and, and says this from, she's from Planned Parenthood. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it's just part of the musical number now. It doesn't really get its own moment, uh, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, and for the most part, they changed the, um, the cutting of her t-shirt, uh, to take emphasis, I guess, off of her breasts, but then she kind of is still because there's, at least even with the description, she's sort of like seductively being wet. She gets drenched, and uh, and that becomes the thing. And then everybody else just is trying to look wet with their mascara running. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the foot the foot cream change was different. I didn't mind it. Uh, you know, I, they 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 made choices. They cut some scenes. Uh, Mrs. Norbury doesn't meet Janice and Damien at work. Uh, it's yeah. So. Uh, it does, when you, when you take some things out, it does make it sort of odd when you keep, when you leave some things in that didn't tie into other things. So it's just, it's a, again, I go back to the, it's a little weird and my questions are why. Um, I think the talent is here except Angori Rice. Please cast people who can sing. Angori Rice has no power in her voice at all and you have her up against some really beast singers. There's no one who's even close to her level of voice. She's a little bit like Amanda Seyfried, if you've ever heard Amanda Seyfried sing. Amanda Seyfried has this really like lilting, sort of wispy voice, and we keep casting her in musicals also. So it's like, technically, yes, she can sing. Technically also, she has a very wussy, wimpy voice. Um, it's not strong. Um, you can find there has to be somebody else who could have played this role that can sing differently than than that. I'm not saying every girl needs to belt, but um, it was breathy as shit and it was driving me insane. Uh, it's just it's just um, put some focus on those on those vocal folds, please. It's driving me up the wall. Anyway, um, yeah, I wasn't she, her acting was fine, but her singing was no. I, I, then take away her songs. You know what I'm saying? Katie's songs aren't even that good to begin with. They're not the ones that people remember. 
So leave in where, uh, where you belong and cut stupid with love, you know? Um, but, or whatever the hell she sang with that at the beginning was, I, that thing, and just cut that. Anyway, uh, that's it. Um, yeah, uh, Mean Girls. It's, uh, it, everyone's gonna like it differently because everybody's gonna have a different visceral reaction to this. Uh, I can't predict if you're gonna like it or hate it. I did not hate this musical. I, I like a lot about it because I like the stage musical. I like what the stage musical did with it. I think if you write a clever version of a stage musical, you can actually do something that pays tribute to the original while also doing something of your own. I think there are plenty of examples of this. I think Heather's works really well. I think Legally Blonde works really well. Um, and I think Mean Girls, for the most part, does this. I did see uh, a movie critic, actually a pretty solid movie critic, I should name check, uh, Alonzo, um, part of Breakfast All Day, was mentioning that uh, he didn't think any of the songs in the Mean Girls musical were worth anything. Like, he didn't think any of them were memorable. But I disagree, and I hear people singing them all the time. If an earworm is an earworm, you know it when you walk away and you can sing it later on. And some of the songs are earworms. Um, some of them are not, which is, is fair. Uh, and most of them are Katie's songs. <laughs> but um, I, live in, I live and work around music theater kids and they sing plenty of the songs out of this musical um, and love them. So uh, it's his opinion to say that, but I think I, I think this music is a lot um, more well regarded by its target demographic than he gives it credit for. So the fact that they kept most of it is a good thing. Um, the fact that they hired people who could sing was a good thing. Um, I just uh, yeah, I, I needed a better Katie and a couple better choices that made sense. You know, some of it just make just make better choices. Uh, you can make different choices, but some of these just, I don't know. So with all that said, um, this is like the longest review I've ever done, but I have a lot to say as a fan of everything, of all the Mean Girls stuff and having seen the movie and the, the show. And uh, why did we not do Rockin' Around, like, uh, why did that change? Like, um, Jingle Bell Rock. Why is it not rocking around the pole? What the fuck is that? <laughs> like, what is what is that song? <laughs> Why do we not do Jingle Bell Rock? I just... <laughs> Could you not get the rights to Jingle Bell Rock? What is rocking around the pole? I've literally have never heard that song in my life before. Um, I don't know what rocking around the pole is. I, I just... Good God. Anyway... Um, I loved that, um, uh, Damien sang the, the theme song to iCarly in French. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some really good choices here. So, um, overall, I had a pretty good time. Uh, it's, there's some stuff here, though, that, that keeps us from really soaring. Um, but, uh, I will remember Renee Rapp, and I'm absolutely here for her. Whatever she wants to do next, she, uh, she has a very solid chance of being, like, my, like, in my top 10 uh, breakthrough uh, performances of, of this year. So um, I'm going to give Mean Girls, the musical, a B minus. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's it. Um, I reached the end of the review. Thanks for watching our website, macmovieguy.com. You can follow me on next to Instagram at MacMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, abp.acd.org, to let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adda.org. That's the adna.org. to let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it. I will watch something else and see you guys uh, on the other side.